everyone, Chris and I are going to give our 2021 end of year wrap up. And what a year it has been. We were joking about it a couple days ago. We went from below zero in Alaska last Christmas to 70s and sunny this Christmas and a lot to happen in between. We're going to talk about some of the things we've learned on the road, what we would do differently, uh, some items that you may want to think about if you're going to be going full time or part time. Um, even m most timers are going to <laughs> need, you're going to need to know about this. So stick around. Uh, we've got a lot to cover. The beginning of 2021 was awesome. We were excited watching lots of YouTube because there was nothing else to do in the winter of Alaska. So we ordered a brand new 2021 Alliance Valor toy hauler. We did it sight unseen. First thing we would never do again, don't order a trailer without walking the floor plan. We were extremely lucky, wouldn't yeah. you say? Absolutely. The manufacturer and our trailer has exceeded all expectations. But our first piece of advice, walk it. Make sure you know what you're getting before you buy it. Got very lucky. <laughs> yeah, we ordered our truck and Martha, how did that go? It was awesome. We got every option we wanted, the color, everything, and it came early. But, drum roll. Early causes problems. Yes. Another thing, do differently. When you're planning on going full timing, make sure your dates make sense. And the reason I say that is our truck was supposed to be done in May. Our trailer was supposed to be done in May. Murphy doesn't work on truck and trailer time. No, especially during these times with shortages and... Yeah. Yeah. Our truck was done early, so we jumped on a plane and picked up our truck. Our trailer was done late, so six weeks in between, living in an Airbnb. That sucked. That was so freaking expensive. Airbnbs in Central Florida, be prepared to open that wallet and have yeah. pockets. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you better have a savings plan. Yeah. So that brings me to the next thing to think about that we've learned in our first uh, calendar year on the road. Plan ahead, make sure you have a plan B and try to coordinate your dates so that you don't get huge overlaps like we did because that's what screwed us. It wasn't anybody's fault but our own because we left Alaska too soon and our trailer got delayed due to manufacturer issues, um, which is universal at this point. So yeah, just plan ahead. Shortage and... Yeah. Before we left Alaska, Chris and I, and also our daughter, we made sure we got all of our medical appointments taken care of, the dentist, all our checkups. So you wanna go ahead and get that out of the way before you do hit the road. And make sure you plan well in advance for wherever you're gonna see your uh, practitioner, whether it's your hometown where you're from or wherever you're gonna be setting up your home base. But make sure you get those scheduled and make sure you coordinate those times so that when you're coming through that area, you can get it taken care of. Uh, me, I had a dummy moment. Seems to be a pattern here. <laughs> I had a dummy moment. I didn't plan ahead real well for my contacts and I realized that I ran out of contacts. So uh, thanks to Costco in Elkhart, Indiana, we were able to swoop in and get some contacts ordered. So plan ahead on your medical so that you know exactly what to do, where to do it, and you don't have to stress and run out of contact lenses. Make checklists. So I think a lot of it, Chris and I got caught up in the moment. It's, it is emotional. You know, we're selling this big, beautiful house in Alaska. We're going to hit the open road and just yep. go on all these adventures, but not everything lines up perfectly. <laughs> it's just, it's life. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that would be our kind of our next tip. If you can't ro roll with the punches and you're not comfortable with stuff just falling to hell to pieces, this may not be the lifestyle for you. Nothing goes as you anticipate. Everything costs more than you think and takes longer to fix or install. Now, would we do it again? Yeah. Absolutely, without a doubt, 100%. 100%. The people and the destinations that we've seen so far 11 states we thought it was 12 but we went back and fact checked sir well and there's a reason why but because numbers are hard <laughs> <laughs> numbers are hard and one day we decided to just go ahead and go for it and go double the mile right so. we were supposed to have stopped in an extra state we ended up helping out some friends so we skipped a state 
We went through 11 states. We went just under 6,000 miles. Um, we've had our Valor now just about, just over six months at this point. And it's been great. Um, the RV lifestyle as a whole is so laid back. The people are awesome. Mm -hmm. the, the places you get to see and the freedom to set your own journey and destination is what makes this such an incredible adventure. Highly recommend it for anybody that's interested in it now. But here's the reality, though. As we said, crap will go wrong. Understand that. I had a meltdown, straight up meltdown through a BF. Yeah, he did. <laughs> when we first got our trailer, I wasn't 100% familiar with how the integration of the solar system worked with the generator, and we were boondocking in a harvest host. And I ran our batteries down too low because they're lithium, didn't have experience with those. Well, a catastrophic series of events that wasn't that big of a deal. It was just me not knowing. Long story short is it tripped the breaker on our generator and I didn't realize there was two breakers on a generator so I couldn't get the trailer to generate power and the alarm was going off nonstop and I couldn't get it to stop. Thank God for our manufacturer Alliance RV. I was able to pick up the cell phone, call one of their super genius service people and he told me, hey, walk out and flip these two switches, which solved the problem. But the point behind that is not the break. The point is you're mentally going to lose your crap on the road. Eventually, it's going to happen. That's the truth of the matter. Something's going to frustrate you, whether it's a travel day, um, getting cut off, getting flipped off, yeah. stuff breaking, tires leaking. Like That's all part of the emotion. If you can't roll with the punches, it's going to be a challenge. Just special shout out. Thank you, Jim. On travel days, you want to slow down, get up early, make breakfast, have your coffee, get your checklist out, and run through it. Chris and I have learned that we need to double check. I'll go through my checklist, he'll go through his checklist, and then we'll cross-reference. We found that less room for air. There are times where maybe we left a cabinet door open or not latched. Mm -hmm. so. And keep in mind that each person will see things differently. So having each one of us go through our checklist, and we mm -hmm. use an app, Martha will link that down below. We're not affiliated with it, but it works well for us. When I go through the checklist, I'm looking at a certain series of things on the list. And then Martha goes through and looks at it, and she looks at things that are different than me. I have a tendency to look up. I'm a tall guy. Martha has a tendency to look down, which She's is- vertically challenged. <laughs> right. But because of that, you, each of us working through our checklist, you found missing screws and bolts mm -hmm. that I missed. Yeah. I found cabinets that weren't shut because stuff happens. Slow down. Leave early. Give yourself a huge buffer. You'll be lucky if you make 50 miles of progress in an hour of travel throughout an entire travel day. So figure out what your parameters are and set them. Martha and I had to do one trip where we went 700 miles in one day. Is it doable? Yeah. Would I recommend it? No, it sucks. Yeah. It's such a long day. So find out what makes you comfortable. And for us, we found about 300 miles is the most we want to do in a day. Yeah. If we can try to pull off six to eight hours of travel, which comes out to about three to 350 miles a day. Yeah. Plus traveling with a dog too. It, she needs to stretch her legs and have her relief breaks. Queen of Sheba down there who's sleeping right below us. Yeah has the entire back seat, but just know they're gonna take time. They add to your travel day. And you can't tell her, hey, just wait 10 more minutes. We're almost to the rest stop. Nope, she'll be like, whoa, right up in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> what Chris and I have enjoyed is getting involved in the social aspect of the RV life community. So Alliance has the best RV community. We love our allies and we've made so many new friends. There's other manufacturers, of course. There's mm -hmm. other ways to do that. One of the ways that we're involved, we're part of Escapees, who handles our mail. Um, if you haven't set up a mail forwarding service, I'd highly recommend them. Nope, again, no affiliation, but it's been flawless. Everything has been seamless with Escapees. They also have magazines, they've got a community, they have get-togethers, they have rallies. So getting part of Escapees was a great thing for us. The other one is our village. 
our village is awesome. It's like a Facebook platform just for RVers. And any kind of social group or interest you have, they've got a group for that and you can get together with them. They were even during COVID uh, doing virtual bingo. Yes. <laughs> they were doing v bingo over the internet just to get people together and be part of the community. So do what Martha said, get involved in the community and the RV lifestyle. It truly is a lifestyle and it's about having fun and making life an adventure. And you learn a lot from everyone too. So along with our Alliance Facebook groups, escapees, our village, there's other ones out there. There's military ones we're a part of as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you have questions? This is new to us too. So <laughs> yeah, go ahead and ask. That brought up a nice uh, thought. Super important if you're going to go RVing. And I don't care if you're a weekend warrior or a full timer. Research the RV parks. Holy crap. We looked at one on Facebook, or excuse me, on the internet. It looked good. And we were going to go stay there. And we happened to be relatively close by. So it's like, all right, let's swoop in there since our trailer's already set up at this other location. I'm not going to blast them. But don't stay in locations. Research your parks because, my God, if we'd have stayed there, I'd have been outside with a gun and a bulletproof vest on all night. It was horrible. So please. It, it was definitely really, really run down. Not somewhere safe, especially like with small children. I would not recommend it. There was so much crime when we looked up the area. It just was really, it was bad. Do your research because mm -hmm. all the crime statistics is public information. If you do a little research on either like the city, town, location, you can find out what's going on. Yeah, we don't, we dodged a bullet there. So please do your research on where you're going. Read the, read the reviews. Honestly, read the reviews. We went on to Yelp and their webpage, everything. Read the reviews. Look at the most current because the ones that were older was like, this is the greatest place ever. And then all the way up two like, months ago was my RV got broken into. My truck got broken into. I got assaulted. Like, right. There was a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. The police were here all night. We, the, one of the comments was that there was a hostage situation. Holy crack house, Batman, stay away. Yeah, we we enjoy walking Cali in the evening because it's cooler for her down here in Florida. And we don't want to run any, any situation where it's unsafe for us and for our dog. So one other thing that is so crucial to RVing is paring down. And you saw our cringy video that we put out in the very beginning. Oh my God, that first video. Woo. When you pare down your stuff, it's liberating. And that's great. When you buy your RV, you accumulate more stuff. Holy crap. Yeah, we went from like, we're 1,600 pounds under to 60 pounds. So two, store, two things in there. One... Weigh your RV and know your weight so you're towed safely. Two, don't buy more stuff. Well, here's the thing. So <laughs> get a storage unit if you don't have somewhere to store like a family, friend, a place to store things. Or if you decide to have a home base, which we'll talk about in a minute, have a home base and being able to just pack your trailer lighter. And that's, that is a super valid point because the reality is for a long time, our worldly possessions 100% was in our trailer, which means her grandparents' China, which anybody knows that, weighs a ton. Carrying our wedding dress, well, your wedding dress, I didn't wear it. <laughs> Wasn't that kind of party. <laughs> Carrying wedding dress, having things that are momentums. Hunting clothes, bow and arrow, I mean, we had everything in here. It's like, where were we going to put it? So we did get a storage unit here in Central Florida for a little while. Uh, yes. So a storage unit is a must. Somewhere to keep your stuff, to keep the light. And it'll help you if you're going to be going seasonally. Um, even if you're not. Like right now, we're wintering in Florida because it's 70 and 80 degrees and I'm loving life. 82 degrees right now. Yes. Continue. So we're wintering in Florida. So what our plan was to have the storage unit and then be able to switch out summer clothes, winter clothes, uh, like you're saying, activities. So water sports, fishing, camping, hunting, things like that, that we can stick in storage when we're not using them, but have access to them when we want, as long as we plan ahead. Now, home base, that was a big one. 
we decided to get a home base in Central Florida. If you haven't seen the video, Martha will link it at the end of this video. Who's the Martha too? Over there. <laughs> Watch our video on our home base. We're not going to regurgitate that. But for us and our financial future, and for me being like an OCD planner, it was good for us. And it's wonderful. And we cannot wait to get back on the road. Um, now that that's done, we've got a couple of events locally and we're going to be off. We are going, so 2022, let's talk about 2022 that. 2022 is very exciting. So we have at least three rallies planned. So we have Florida, Texas, and Indiana. We're really excited. We have a friend we're going to go visit in Montana. Coming to Trent. Trent. <laughs> and we definitely California. So right now we're set up to go about 16,000 miles for 2022. We are going to be doing a massive loop through the US and we're gonna shoot up the East Coast. Then we're gonna go down back South, go over to Texas for the rally. Then we're gonna go up to Indiana for our national rally. And then we're gonna head West and go through Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Oregon, California, and then back down South and head across uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, blah, 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 all the way back to Florida for the holidays. So we are going to spend, uh, I would say a solid eight months straight is kind of what we're anticipating as long as nothing food bars. We already have reservations back at Disney World Sport Wilderness for November. Well, of course, Miss, okay. Mi Miss Mickey Magic over here wants her birthday at Disney, and who am I but a good husband to say yes, dear? Best husband ever. Right. Glad she... <laughs> Y'all heard that. Put it on the calendar. <laughs> well, so, and we also have some flexibility in our schedule as well, too. So, what would you call 2021? Am I, if I were going to sum it up in a word, what would I call it? I'd call it success. Yeah. It was a success. So it's definitely a roller coaster. Life really did happen. It Living happened really, so freaking fast. It, did. it seemed like forever that it was going to take forever to leave Alaska, to get our RV, to get on the road, to just a whirlwind. Everything all happened at once. And it's been exciting. Well, as all things in life, it was like hurry up and wait. Yeah. Like, oh, your truck's done. Go. All right, cool. Your trailer will be done in May. Cool. We fly... We fly down, we jump in, we grab the truck, we drive to Florida, and uh, hit the brakes. You don't get your trailer until six weeks later until July 4th weekend. And then from July 4th weekend all the way up until pretty much late October, we were on the road everywhere. And then we decided to winter in Florida to hang out with our kid. Mm -hmm. And then we decided to buy the home base because we fell in love with the area. So yeah. that worked out really good. It's now January 2nd. Happy New Year's, Happy everybody. New Year. And we cannot wait for what this year brings for the adventure. We're excited. It, it was a lot of preparing to get to where we're at today. Yep. A lot of learning curves and you know, I don't regret any. No. And, and uh, I'm going to get a little sappy with you here. In all seriousness, Martha and I are so freaking happy with the lifestyle, the people we've met, the support we've received from the internet, which is wild because usually they, that doesn't go real well, but the people that we've met and the interactions that we've had, like we've already met lifelong friends. We've met people that we've driven across multiple states just to go hang out with. Yeah. We've met people that we now, we just actually literally just came from a lunch with another family that we met. The relationships that you build on the road is like un. It's unlike anything else you've ever done. Yeah. And I can't thank the community as a whole. Um, Facebook, allies, YouTube, like everybody in our village. It's been wild how much support we've received. Yeah. And we're nobody, right? We're a dinky ass little channel that are two just goofy people that are having fun trying to bring content to you guys that, br that brings value. And to receive the warmth and the support, I can't thank you guys enough because honestly, we're having a ball doing this and I wouldn't have it any other way. I truly wouldn't. This is exactly what I hoped for when we hit the road, minus the meltdown. <laughs> <laughs> I made Martha cry. Sorry, y'all, but this is real. This has been awesome. Thank you. And we can't wait to meet you on the road. 
So when you see us, don't hesitate. You can't miss us. We got a 44 foot toy hauler, a big goofy dog, and a, you know. I made her cry. Wasn't my goal, but I'm being real. Has it been everything you wanted? Well, thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you've made it this far into the video, please do that. Um, you know, Martha and I would love to continue to bring content that brings value to you all. And the only way we do that is through subscription through YouTube. It doesn't cost you anything. So hit the subscribe button and come along on the journey. And when you see us on the road, don't hesitate to flag us down, say hi, because we'd love to hang out. Usually I'm not really crying, but it, it has been. It's been a blast. It's been a blast. It's been an emotional journey. More so for me. Um, a lot of us, a lot of what stemmed us to go RVing is um, having my mom pass the way she did. It's been a heart for yeah. me. Yeah. And That's a part of life that stemmed us to really just go F it. We want to go. My mom died really young. My stepfather died really young. Martha's mom and dad died really young. We want to enjoy life. And we want to have a blast doing it. I want my regrets in life to be not what ifs. Right? What if yeah. I'd have done this? What if I'd done that? And that's not what it's about for us. For us, it's like, screw that. We have the opportunity. We are blessed beyond belief. Let's go.